Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today, we want to have a look at the Red Core Linux. This is the new release. I believe it's 2101. The download I grabbed said it was the beta, but I'm not sure it actually was the beta. I think it was listed wrong on DistroWatch. But anyway, um, we're going to have a look at this. So Red Core is, they've had a few different iterations, a few different things it's based on, but right now it's basically designed as Gen 2 for the masses is what they say. It's based primarily to be used as a desktop environment system, not like a server base. So some of the development tools or server type tools are going to be lacking from the repos and they want to have the repos having as high quality as possible. So they've left out a lot of things. Basically, they don't want to be like, hey, we're Arch. We have absolutely everything. They want to be like everything in here absolutely works. So think more solace in that everything in their repo is curated in that respect. So their website is at redcorelinux.org and uh, the video that they are giving us here is from DistroTube, so that's cool. And uh, we have some basic information down here about it. So it's uh, basically based on um, um, uh, a Rogent development group. We had uh, Cowgens. So all of these projects have, have ended and they wanted to carry this on and basically have a Gen 2 for the masses that you could run basically a pure Gen 2 without having to compile, make everything, or spend hours and hours and hours. I mean, guys, don't forget, even the great Brian Lunduke gave up after 24-hour streaming just to get Gen 2 going. I mean, when the greats can't do it, I'm not even going to try. I, I just play around with Linux to get my work done and and have uh, have a look at new systems and new ways of doing things. And so we're on this plasma kick, by the way. If there were other options, I might have chosen a different one. Um, but um, I've just been living in plasma lately since my work computer is now running on plasma because uh, Cinnamon won't work on the Raspberry Pi quite as well. And so, um, yet again, another Plasma build. All right, there you go. So why is it? It shares the same idea about the defunct uh, ancestor. Uh, is it is it Koyan or, or what is it? I don't know how to pronounce half these words. All right. Um, it's to bring the power of Linux, uh, Gen 2 Linux specifically, to the masses. Of course, Gen 2 is very good and streamlined, low system resources. It's a good, good Linux distro to, to run. It's just very complicated to set up if you're doing it out of the box. And so there you have it. So it targets casual laptop desktop users to some extent, workstation power users, but they say down here, um, let's see, it'll nicely fill gaming, multimedia things, but it does not have, um, it doesn't have everything you need for servers and things. And so some of the stuff that I might do, uh, web design stuff, Apache, um, SQL, Nginx, things like that are going to be missing, but that's perfectly fine. So you can head on over to the downloads and over here we give us, I love it when they give us the usernames and passwords in the case we need them. Root with no password, red core with no password. We have uh, some US mirrors, Germany mirrors, Russia mirrors. We have the ISO and we have the various checksums. So there's what you have it. There is a listing for bugs, listing for Git, and uh, there's a wiki and some donate stuff. So if you do like and use the project, definitely consider donating to the project because that will help them move along. So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and uh, boot into our um, distro here. And uh, hopefully this actually boots when we are, um, uh, when we are uh, getting in here. Sometimes when I'm doing the videos, I do not like to boot into the, des the uh, desktop. So let's see if it works. And it looks like it's going pretty good. We have nice animated loading screens. Everything does look good and polished out of the box. We can probably push up to see what's going on under the under the background, but without doing that, we have uh, just a nice um, a nice build. We have a really cool cursor here. Just I love this nice little red cursor. The challenge that I found is that once we land on the desktop, the theming seems a little out of place. <laughs> we'll we'll get into that. So here the default is X. We have Wayland as well. So we have a couple different options. Um, X was actually running a little uh, a little wobbly on my virtual machine. All right, so we've gotten ourselves logged in. I did go with Wayland to give that a test. I didn't test Wayland earlier, but lately I've found that uh, sometimes your uh, Wayland on my old particular old VM here 
works pretty well, depending on the on the distro. So here we are on the desktop. I went ahead and put that picture there for my thumbnail. So over here, we got a clean desktop. We have an ask for help, which takes you to the free node um, channel. So you can chat there. What would actually be helpful too is if somewhere there was some documentation, maybe it is in here and I just didn't see it. Uh, you can see here though, out of the box with how epic the cursor is and just how modern the web, the uh, wallpaper looks, the theming actually does to me look a little out of place. So if uh, theming is, is kind of your thing, that's, you know, that's something that might drive you a little crazy, especially the theming, the light theming seems to clash with these icons a little bit. That's okay. That's something that, that, uh, can be changed. So let's go ahead and, uh, hit our system settings and see if there's other themes out of the box that we have. Here's our appearance. We have breeze, breeze dark, breeze twilight, and oxygen. I think that twilight might work well with this. Let's have a look. Okay, so here's uh, our uh, red core logo doesn't look uh, as good there, but um, I think this, uh, yeah, this is a little nicer. I'm not a huge fan of the theming, but that's, I mean, that's easy to change. That's not a, a major criticism. So when we log in here to the desktop, it is very clean. We do not have an overwhelming amount of applications. It does kind of keep very minimal just so you can have a basic operating system and choose what you want. Um, the only thing I installed as a test was the Chromium browser. So Lutris and Steam are both installed. They did make a mention of gaming on their website. So you can see that they are indeed focused towards that. We have um, GIMP here, FontForge. I did, as I said, I installed Chromium. Everything else, we have Mozilla on Wayland. There's a couple different Mozillas. This is the first time I've seen those uh, isolated out like that. I'm curious as to why those are isolated out and really what is the difference there. Uh, but um, that's okay. Over here we have our uh, nice media systems. Here's this. You can kind of see the menu is bleeding underneath the, the taskbar there. Not sure if that's a basic theming stuff or whatever else. So let's pull up the uh, system resources here and um, see what this guy looks like. When I tested it earlier today, really? Why did, did I hit printing? I thought I hit your system resources. Interesting. There we go. All right, so yeah, this is about what it was earlier for me. Just about half a gig of RAM, so that's actually pretty nice. Running on the VM here, it is uh, works works fairly well. Now, out of the box, they've given us uh, flat pack support. Now, there are some documentation on getting flat packs to work with uh, Gentoo. They specifically say in the website, you don't need to mess with any of that. You can just come on in here and you can enable or disable flat pack support here. We can add FlatHub. You can add a variety of different sources. So if you have a source that you need to install to have uh, some other form of custom flat pack or some other software package where you need their own custom, you can go ahead and add it right here through the GUI. So very, very good flat pack support. And um, I didn't see anything snap. And that always makes me happy when I see a, a lack of snap packages. So if we go ahead and search here in Discover, we can... Uh, we can find uh, the applications. Let me get out of the settings and do a search. So I'm not seeing Caden live in there. Am I just in the wrong spot? Or are we, um, let's look under multimedia, audio and video editors. There's nothing to find. Interesting. So I'm not sure why I'm getting nothing found in here. Um, we did run some updates earlier today. I figured I would find something in here. Verifying we have internet connection. Interesting. We do have internet connection. Maybe there's something I'm missing here. Let's uh, go ahead and add FlatHub to this. But let's go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and tell you guys how you can find other stuff. Here we are. There we are. Now at least we have some software from, from FlatHub. Now if you are looking for how to install software packages not in Discover, then they are using, oh boy, 
I'm forgetting the name of it now. <laughs> I might have to go over to their to their website again and double check. It was on their wiki. It's like, is it Sisyphus, I think? Sisyphus? Let me go ahead and um, let me just push up. I'll find it there. Uh, okay, we do have to go into our super user, and it is Sisyphus is what they're using. Pretty much works almost exactly like... Um, works exactly like apt. So if we do this and, um, is it, is it Sisyphus? Sisyphus? I don't know. Hey, people always criticize me on my pronunciations. We'll leave it at that. We'll just start embracing the fact that I can't pronounce anything right now. I'll just start it referring to tomatoes as tomatoes and potatoes as patatas. But uh, Sisyphus is uh, what I'll call it here. Very much like apt. Just do update. It'll, you know, sync the packages, do upgrade. It'll, it, install any upgrades that you happen to have uh sysfus install and then your package name will go ahead and install it so if i wanted to um if i wanted to install for example um we talked about caden live there so it's going to go ahead look around for caden live then it's going to give me the basic prompting so if something's not showing up in discover and this is not the um this is not the first time i've seen stuff not show up in discover uh, it, maybe that's some of the criticisms. Of course, other things that other Plasma desktops do seem to have a problem with, it cannot seem to access my network shares. I was actually not even able to access my network shares going to them manually either. So that was actually a little bit on the annoying side for me. Um, but that's always been a long-term issue with Plasma is not working well with network shares out of the box. But this is how you're going to install software from the, from the command line. I think one uh, one other question that we had here, so here you go, would you like to install it? Sure. One other question that we had here, uh, I think the developers at least watching the live one here, is can we install other desktop environments on it? So uh, I'm not gonna go searching for those in Discord, or in Discover, excuse me, because yeah, I'm not seeing anything except the flat packs there anyway. But you can see here it is installing here, so we could always test to see if GNOME or Cinnamon or other things are there. And uh, the the documentation is very light. Let me just go ahead and um, uh, let's see if I can find the basic documentation here. All right, so I'll just, hold on, it's not gonna let me put it on top of my distro. We'll have to go back to, uh, let's just go back to that. I'll show you guys uh, the documentation here. We land on the wiki and over here, you just hit your table of contents and we just have the about, we have basic installation, we have some first steps in package management. So it is very light on documentation. So it's not gonna be the best Linux distribution of choice to play with as your first foray into Linux. Um, being based on Gentoo as well, you're probably not going to find as many solutions as you might find on, on an Ubuntu based, a Debian based, or even an Arch based is going to have a lot of stuff in there as well. So the documentation stuff is a little bit lacking behind, but uh, that's okay. I was actually able to get in here and at least figure out what package manager to use and things like that. So um, there is overall my, my basic take. Overall, it's actually a, a really good build for if you, particularly if you like Plasma and if you like, um, you want to use a Gentoo, but you don't want to go through all of the uh, all of the requirements it takes to build it from source. This is actually a very good choice. Um, I don't know right now if you can install other desktop environments with it. It's still installing um, Kden Live over here, so I'm not going to test it right here for the video. Uh, but if you do know for sure, let us know in the comments there. And if I hear so, then I will go ahead and um, maybe pin a comment down there. Out of the box, it's clean, it's light, it's uh, the the look and appearance out of the box has a little bit to desire, but that's easily changed. They have other themes that may, do look a little bit better inside of the settings by default without having to install anything else. And I do love that little red pointer. So something something dark with some red highlights would be a really cool addition um, for the developers to want to do some styling. But again, all that stuff is just, that's just, you know, lipstick and rouge, no big deal. So overall, definitely a good, uh, a good build. If you've been using Linux for a while and you want to 
play around with a Gen 2 build without having to go through everything it takes. You can go ahead and install this one out, play around with it. It looks really good and uh, definitely support the developers if you are using it on a regular basis. So uh, there's our thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on this distribution in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.